During the summer of seventh grade, I started being very negative about life and started forgetting about all the good things in life. So, my mom gave me the idea to start journaling. Basically, every day I write five good things that happened on that day and then I try to focus on them. This helps me remember the positive parts instead of the negative parts of that day. Though, this doesn't mean that I don't allow myself to feel upset about a situation. It's extremely normal to experience negative thoughts, but we just need to learn how to handle these situations. Journaling has shown me how to deal with negative thoughts and has made me more grateful for everyone in my life. As Annie Frank says, think of all the beauty still around you and be happy. Some other ways I improve my mental health is by spending time with my family and friends. My family and friends always make me happier and give me a place to tell my thoughts. I've always been a social person, so when I'm around people, I have a lot of energy and excitement. Another way I improve my mental health is by dancing. Dancing has always been the one thing that makes me happy. When I dance, I don't have to worry about anything that's happening in my life. I can just live in the moment. It also lets me express my emotions and thoughts. I'm so grateful that I have the opportunity to dance and express myself through it. I also enjoy reading. Reading can transfer you into another person's life, unlocking a new perspective for you. I love reading because it gives you lessons that can have huge effects on you. A book I read called Every Last Word is about a girl with a mental illness learning to live in our world. The author, Tamara Island Stone, states, It's a story about a girl who finds the courage to remove her mask, learns that life is scary without it, and keeps it off anyways. It's a story about self-acceptance and discovering your own normal. This book gave me a huge lesson on accepting yourself, friendship, and mental health. She also states, I've been thinking a lot about words like normal and perfect and the power they can have on people, especially teens. I think that this book is something that a lot of teens can relate to, especially the mental health aspect of it. Lastly, I enjoy playing tennis. I'm a very active person, so I love sports. Tennis is a great way to use my energy and stay active. I really like setting myself a goal in tennis and trying to achieve it. When I achieve it, I always feel really happy for overcoming a challenge. I'm also a competitive person, so I really enjoy matches in tennis. I especially enjoy it when I win. Do you have any sports you like to play? Doing these five things improve my mental health so much. They all have a positive impact on my life. You might be wondering, why should we take care of our mental health? Well, mental health includes your emotional, psychological, and social well-being. It can affect your energy, your relationships with people, can cause anxiety, depression, and mood swings. To prevent these things, we need to make sure that we always take care of our mental health. Now, let's ask some students on how they improve their mental health. To improve my mental health, I play games. To improve my mental health, I hang out with my friends. To improve my mental health, I usually listen to music. To improve my mental health, I play with my dogs. To improve my mental health, I watch movies. To improve my mental health, I play baseball. To improve my mental health, I chat with my friends. To improve my mental health, I do gymnastics. To improve my mental health, I stay away from my sister. Self-care is always important to take time to improve your physical and mental health and manage stress. Make sure to always take care of yourself and give yourself breaks. Now, do you think you have some ideas on how you can improve your mental health? I hope this was helpful. So today I'll be asking some questions about what global warming is and why we should care about global warming. So the first question is, what is global warming? Global warming is a climate change, and climate change is when the winter gets hotter and cooler because of greenhouse gases. The second question is, how does greenhouse gas affect global warming? Greenhouse gas affects global warming by trapping heat and closing the Earth's surfaces. These traps can be wrapped around the Earth keeping the planet toastier than it would be without them. The last question is, why we should care about global warming? I care about global warming because there's a lot of people who trashes their garbage on the ground and make the world even more dirtier. If people do that, it will make it more dirtier and dirtier. What should people do? People should make a poster about not trashing or throwing garbage on the ground and the ocean. People should put trash in the garbage can. According to the EPA, people nowadays spend up to 90% of their days indoors using an interior space. In a classroom, home, or 
bathroom. But why? Why may people spend so much time indoors? Well, how are hotels luxurious yet relaxing? How are classrooms useful? And how are Japanese temples peaceful? Art, science, and technology are combined to create spaces of functionality, interaction, and safety. In other words, it's interior design. 9.28 a.m. As the workday begins for Tokyoites in an airport, classroom, Disneyland, or elsewhere, she is going on an adventure. First stop, Blue Bottle Cafe. Oh man, this may take a while. In the meantime, Japan is very much famous, or infamous, about its really small spaces. Why? Because of its many mountains and extreme population density. So how do the Japanese create tranquility, nature, and space while being crammed in limited urban areas? Well, they use interior design techniques, some distinct to Japan, some globalized. Take this cafe, for example. From here, we can see a lot of ki, wood, and also the use of ishi along the circular counter that flows through the cafe. And windows, many windows, for the outdoors to blend into the indoors. One particular detail about Japanese design is its way of connecting to Shinto values of shizen, nature, wa, harmony, and honshitsu, the essential. 10.18 a.m. Let us see where our individual is now, Sankeian. Countries all over the world are known for certain landscape and architectural landmarks. Japan is no exception. This traditional Japanese residence and garden, built in 1906, showcases many Japanese architectural and interior designs. Roofs of different styles, engawa, shoji, and fusuma, and the use of tatami and take. These elements are famous, but the ancient Japanese didn't design them just for the looks. How about the functionality? So you, a period of severe rainfall and humidity in Japan that lasts through June and July. And so these roof designs offer the paper of Fusuma some protection from rain, allowing people to open their windows even in the midst of the rainy season. Japanese straw mats, tatami, also absorb moisture when humid and release it when dry, like an air conditioner. There are other design details too, used by the ancient Japanese with structural, material, the essential, and availability-wise context in mind. 7 p.m. Japanese interior design is an ever-evolving concept with impacts from, from religion, geography, and its people. It connects traditional to modern, nature to technology, and people to people, creating spaces of comfort, peace, and functionality. Next time you're chilling in a hotel, waiting in line for Indiana Jones, or just staying at your grandma's place, May you be able to see the interior designs that make the space the space it is. Do you watch news, anime, or play games? Or even watch movies and dramas in languages other than the original one? Did you know that most voices in these shows are voiced by voice actors? Dramas, movies, animes, and games have been entertaining people a lot these days. In all of them, voice actors are involved. Let's dive in and know more about the interesting job of voice actors. As you might know, voice actors voice and dub characters in many shows. Not only that, they also do narrations of some TV shows and commercials. You might be wondering, wait a minute, what does dub mean? Dub or dubbing is when a different voice actor records voices in the language other than the original one. For example, in Japanese anime, in order for non-Japanese speakers to have the same experience as them, they dub the show. The dubbed version will have the character speaking English or any other language. Let's move back to what voice actors are. They act out the voices of characters, narrate news, TV shows, and other things. But other than that, some animes, usually idol related, prepare live concerts where the characters' voice actors go on stage and sing. Speaking of singing, some may have their original songs and albums. Voice actors are starting to get more attention than in the past years, when they were just people working behind the scenes. This led to the population of voice actors and people dreaming of becoming voice actors to increase. However, each step to being one is hard. Even after successfully being one, they most likely have to pass auditions to get jobs. 
So after being one, continuously getting jobs are hard and only a small amount of people can be famous. In Japan in 2001, there were around 370 voice actors, but now in 2022, there are over 1,700 people. About 1,400 people increase in 20 years might feel like a small amount. It's over five times more than in 2001. And because of how voice acting is hard and is a really professional job, it's quite a lot. Recently, people aspiring to become voice actors has increased to over 30,000 people a year. Because of this, there are more and more schools made for those people. There are two types which are basically the same, except one is a vocational school and the other is just taking lessons. They both are for teaching things they need as voice actors. For example, acting, how to include emotions in their voice, and some places even train their singing and dancing abilities too. Now, I am going to try acting a scene from an anime. Sweet flower. ものすごく糖分が高い植物です。食べ物としてはヘルシーではないですが、見ていると穏やかな気持ちになります。As I was recording, I had a few struggles. One was choosing a character that would fit my voice. If the voice is completely different from how the character looks, it will be weird and might ruin the experience. Another struggle was being in character. The line I read was from an anime, so they had the original one. Although when voice actors record, they don't have any examples, so I think it will be way harder. I've never tried things like this, so it was quite fun and interesting. You might knew about voice actors, or maybe not. But if you listen carefully and pay attention, you can hear their voices everywhere. Next time you watch any shows or play games, maybe pay attention to their voices, and you might find certain voices or voice actors you like. Have you ever thought about how to reduce carbon dioxide emission? What would happen if global warming keeps going? Or what ways are there to remove carbon dioxide? Today, I'll be talking about those questions. The first question I'll be talking about is how to reduce carbon dioxide emission. The first way is by replacing an incandescent bulb with an LED light. Incandescent bulbs light up by electricity passing through the filament. But LED light directly converts electrical energy into light, which has more efficient light generation and little wasted electricity compared to incandescent bulbs. The second way is to walk, bike, or use public transportation more often. There are more ways to stop global warming, but these are only some ways to stop global warming. The second question I'll be talking about is what will happen if global warming keeps going? If we don't take any action to stop global warming by the end of a century, the global temperature will rise by 2 to 4 degrees. Superstorms, drought, and heat waves will become more extreme and common. Reaching net zero carbon dioxide emission by 2050 is an ambitious goal. But if we are prepared to act now and act together, we can greatly reduce the rate of global warming. The last question I'll be talking about is what ways are there to remove carbon dioxide? There are a few ways to remove carbon dioxide. The first way is obviously planting trees and protecting forests from bushfires. Trees absorb carbon dioxide and change it into a sugar called glucose for them to grow. The second way is farming. Farm soil can also absorb carbon dioxide just like the trees. One thing that's different is by absorbing carbon dioxide, the soil health and crop yields will increase, which has two benefits instead of one. The third way is direct air capture. It is a technology to remove carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. The captured carbon dioxide will pass through a large air filter, and then it will be transformed into other goods or released into the atmosphere. Stopping global warming can reduce the rate of natural disasters, quieter environment, cleaner air, save lives, and etc. If we don't stop global warming, 2 billion people could be living in part of the world where temperature regularly exceeds 29 degrees by 2070. But it's not too late if we start taking action now. The fear of losing always brings stress to the player's mind. It can come from playing in a tournament for a huge cash prize, or even a simple game of Smash Bros. with your friends. I've always had the fear of losing, and never found a way of letting it go. I always like to think that I'm the best in my friend group for playing billiards, but that thought always makes me lose the game. Billiards, a sport where you miss the shot, you lose the game. This sport is a huge part of my life. 
My father always wanted to learn proper billiards, but his parents never let him. So this is his chance of letting me do what he wanted to do. My uncle also used to play billiards. He used to play a lot of club tournaments. He used to win, and that's my motivation at the moment. I have a lot of respect towards my father and my uncle, and I want to make them proud. My coach used to play in tournaments internationally for a very long time. I'm still wondering till this day how my coach went this long without having any stress. I'm Yuta Kafukuda. I'm from Japan, and uh, I play pool and snooker. When I was young, there's a big boom of a pool because of the movie of Tom Cruise. The title was uh, Col The Color of Money. So every like uh, young kid started to play pool in Japan. I started when I was 13, like a first grade of junior high. First tournament, it's I think it's two years after when I first time to play, so 15. There's a like a local tournament everywhere, everywhere in the town. Actually, I never feel that stress. Like uh, even I started play professionally, I'm quite enjoy. Even I lost. I just try to focus on my play. Uh, always try my best. And I feel, of course, under pressure and feel nervous. But even the the nerve make me fun. You know, it's uh, no ordinary life to feel the big pressure. So it could be enjoyable. You think? <laughs> I, I retired uh, from the tournament about five years ago, even before quarantine, uh, because uh, uh, before the pandemic. I never feel stressful uh, during my career. Completely different stuff between coaching and play myself. I, I think it's more difficult for me because my career of coaching is just started. So I've been coaching like two or three years. Um, yeah, that sometimes, yeah, you're right, stressful. <laughs> but uh, yeah, even though I'm enjoying it, uh, not exactly stress, you know. It's a uh, feel tough when, when I was doing bad, but uh, cannot avoid that kind of experience important to my coaching career, so I need more that stress. If that I guess stress is unavoidable. It's a part of life we have to go through. You must enjoy it every single way and not let it go. Have you ever thought of the situation in Australia? Did you know that thousands of animals are dying because of our daily actions? How are they dangerous? What is the cause? Where does it happen? And why do we need to be thinking about it seriously? So far, about 33 types of species are lost by bushfires. 1.25 billion animals were lost by bushfires in 2020. Bushfires have also destroyed their habitats, which makes the recovery harder. The horrifying part of a bushfire is the speed of spreading. As you can see, in a few minutes, the fire spread through the road with a huge strength. The threats of bushfires aren't only for wild animals. Bushfires have been burning our human-made buildings such as regional town of Australia. Many central cities are burned by bushfires, such as Melbourne, Sydney, and Adelaide in mainly high population areas. Most of the bushfires have occurred nearby the cities because they are caused by human actions, leading to burning the main cities. 90% of cases are caused by human actions. Specifically, fires can be occurring from cigarettes, fuels, and campfires. On the other hand, bushfires can be also caused by natural events such as lightning, dry weather, and windy days coming from the global warming. By the way, do you all know which species are in the most dangerous state? Answer is koala. 
Koalas are now considered as endangered animal, which has been reported that they will be extinct by the end of 2050 if they cannot get enough care from humans. They have lost their habitats and foods by the bushfires because they were all burnt. Due to the loss of their good environments, around 60,000 koalas are lost by bushfires. Also, nearly 43,000 koalas have left their habitats to live under human care to avoid the extinction. To avoid extinction, there are many environmental communities rescuing and curing injured koalas. World Wildlife Fund, WWF, is one of the environmental communities that mainly work on emergency support. They have been supporting special veterinarians who provide ongoing cares and medical treatment to injured wildlife across Australia. Also, they have been providing food and water for starving wildlife from the bushfire impact. Furthermore, they have 600 sensor cameras set up monitoring the bushfire affected areas for checking koalas. To be perfectly prepared for any emergencies, WWF has 148 projects and 175 partnerships for any emergency response. Finally, we are going through some actions we can take for koalas. We can do fundraisers for WWF and also discarding cigarettes, fuels and campfires properly to be responsible for fires. But the simplest thing you can do for koalas is to share this video with your friends to raise awareness of bushfires. In the Robert Albert Hall, a seated man makes his concert entrance towards the piano as a melodic yet powerful piece starts. But as the music carries you away, the pianist's face warps into a Cheshire-like grin and throws his head back as his face scrunches into itself. This phenomenon is commonly known as guitar face and could be seen when a guitarist gets fully immersed in their playing. But pianists, too, have their fair share of facial expressions. However, most pianists sway their bodies or nod their heads instead. In an article on pianism, Barbara James states that musically naive participants make use of the visual cues for their perception of the music's expressive intent, and that a pianist conveys the music's storyline to an audience through dynamic postures and body movements which generate the sounds and expressive gestures which accompany them. But even if some movements are dramatized for aesthetic performance purposes, some expressions are done to support the pianist themselves or done subconsciously through habits. For me, movements generally happen when I perform. I feel inspired to move because I think that it helps me experience the story behind every piece and allows me to feel what the composer wanted to convey. By moving, I hope to be a good storyteller from both my music and movements. Well, music is abstract and different people might feel differently about it. While some performers are very expressive and feel music deep within themselves, others might focus more on techniques and would plan every second of their performance instead of letting themselves move however they wish at the moment. It's based on personality, really. Personality. The personality of a pianist is what makes their body language unique. Take Lan Long as an example. His playing style, which is dramatic and full of admiration for the music, well suits his childish and energetic personality. On the other hand, when the body movement doesn't suit the pianist, the performance might come off as a little uncanny or strange. However, even if a person is still the entire time, it doesn't mean that they can't create the music that they're looking for. Furthermore, some teachers might even recommend their students to be a little more still as to allow the piece to flow through them, rather for them to flow through the piece. But what matters the most is for the individual to find their preference in movement, to move through the music by their own accord, rather than to purely amuse the judges or the audience. As the current of melodies come once more, flowing amidst a hall of audiences, the pianist's fanatical facial expressions and body movements gradually slow to an end, a conclusion to the beautiful story told only through his performance. Applause erupts within an outstanding audience, and the music drifts further, finally fading. Have you ever thought of situations that are related to sea animals? And if you know 
Lord, do you know the problems and cause them to get sense of it? Now let's think and focus on the solutions and the problems of the piano. First, let's see what kind of problems they are. The first problem is overfishing. Overfishing is a problem where there's fish and catching too many fish in the ocean at one time. This can increase human demand, which can cause the loss of employment. Other can be poor management of fisheries, which can damage their jobs. These can affect fish, especially tuna. According to WWF, they said that overfishing could impact the entire ecosystem. It can be affected by the changing of the size of the fish that remain. If too many fish are taken from the ocean, it can create imbalance that can destroy the source. It can lead to the loss of other important sea animals, such as sea turtles. Sea turtles are also part of animals that need help too, especially plastic pollution. Plastic pollution builds up in the environment of synthetic plastic products, which can create a point of wildfires. You can create plastic pollution by throwing away plastic garbage in the ocean or near the ocean. If we keep creating plastic pollution, the sea turtles can eat them by mistaking it. They also can get diseases, sick, or get injured. Stopping plastic pollution is very important because it threatens the ocean health. For example, food safety and food contributes to climate change. This plastic pollution can also make an impact to marine ecosystem too. One of the stories is about sea turtles that die of starvation because its body become filled with plastic. They also suffered from injuries and infections. These problems are all connected to the SDGs. In this goal, there are many specific targets, which are protecting the ecosystem, sustainable fishing, and reducing the marine pollution. These targets can tell the situation and the goals for the safety of ocean. Now, how we can take actions. As I mentioned, there are many people still throwing away the garbage into the ocean. So if it's hard for them to throw away, then we can use fewer pet bottles. By using our own water bottle, which we don't need to use plastic. Another way is to use our own eco bags instead of using plastic bags. Mainly, plastic bags and pet bottles are found in the ocean with sea animals. Around 100 to 300 billion of plastic bags were found in the ocean in 2022. Also, many people see some garbage on the ground, and these garbage doesn't stay there. Garbage is very lightweight, especially plastic, and wind can lead the garbage to the ocean. It is very good to know by just knowing the problems. Let's stop creating pollution. Have you ever shared any of your experiences or opinions on social media? Social media services are digital platforms commonly used to interact with the online democratic community by expressing your feelings and sharing opinions. According to Patty M. Balkenberg's research, children spend approximately four hours on social media daily, whilst teenagers and adolescents spend nine hours. The user's characteristics and personality can be greatly influenced by social media, resulting in their way of speaking and their perspective to change. A hierarchy system exists as certain posts are constantly being appraised, consisting of positive and negative responses. Certain users may be vulnerable to negative responses, especially when addressed by a user who has more followers, psychologically lowering their self-esteem and limiting themselves in real-life scenarios. Well, was it always like this? Not really. Almost all social media users were using computers to access social media during the time period. However, in 2007, the release of Apple's iPhones would revolutionarily influence social media platforms forever. Users would be capable of accessing the internet just within a few taps. Using social media platforms, adolescents could address the conditions they've been undergoing Additionally, featuring images of themselves, which would emphasize the reality of the post and seek others' attention. They tend to seek attention in exchange for emotional support from other users, which would slowly result in addiction. Eventually, however, they will start comparing themselves with other users, albeit in a negative mindset. This also applies to criticism, psychologically injuring the user, and potentially leading to suicidal cases. Even worse, for some users who manage to endure the criticism, start to develop similar attitudes to the assailant. 
Unfortunately for the others, they still come back to social media even after being criticized and criticized over and over again. The teenagers still seek emotional support from social media as they are limiting to themselves in the real world. This procedure functions very similarly to drug addiction. After seeing the undeniable abusive behavior occurring between the teenagers, the circumstances seem almost hopeless. However, we can still sufficiently support their injured mental health just by spreading awareness. If you know someone who's evidently in distress, you might as well start a conversation with them. During the conversation, you will need to efficiently clarify that social media isn't everything. Another topic that you will certainly need to justify is about building your self-confidence. This can be supported by complementing micro-tasks that the audience has accomplished and introducing friends which would give them a better opportunity to discuss embarrassing topics. To conclude, social media has become an amazing opportunity to share our moments along with toxicity born due to the users being addictive. Although the toxicity may harm others like a disease, we can stay forwardly be the antidote just by caring about the victims.